Hello fellow problem solvers, so they're going to be doing a number theory problem, an introductory number theory problem again, and I suggest you try it for a minimum of 10 minutes. Ideally, especially if you're beginning, ideally, you know, 30 minutes to maybe 80-ish minutes, not more than two hours. If I can hand you like to go along with us, your first idea is I don't pay for the next two minutes. Come on, give me, give it a go, give it a go, give it a go, and now let's begin. So we must find all pairs X and Y such that this is true. How are we ever going to do that? Oh, what are we focusing on? Okay, let's see. So the first thing is like this 304. What is it? Like you need to get some information to be able to solve a problem. So 304, that's like two times 152. Again, divide by two, that's times two again. 152 divided by 2 is 76. We can divide by 2 again and we get 38. And then we divide by 2 again, boom, and we get 19. So this is 16 times 19. So the only squares around this are like 18 squared, which is equal to 20 minus 1, like 20 minus actually 2 squared and Okay, I need, think we need to calculate a couple of these squares. So we have 20 squared, which is 400. 19 squared, which is 361, if I'm not mistaken. And then 18 squared is going to be 324, I believe. And that sounds right. So will we have anything the first couple of factorials, what are they? They are 1, then it's a 2, then it's a 2 times 2, 3, two th 3 times 2 is 6, then 24, 304 plus any one of these does not give us a square also. 17 squared is, I think, 289, if I'm not mistaken. And no worries if you don't know these squares in time, you do them again and again and you memorize them even like after you're done competing like me for a long time. So what do we have here? Well, we have okay, what the, the factors of this 304 are. So now we see, okay, we know that this number is divisible by 19. Now, what can that sort of tell us as a horrible estimate for y factorial which is not workable but is something and the answer is well that tells us y cannot be bigger than big, greater than or equals 38 and here's why if y was greater than or equals 38 then this would be divisible by 19 squared this would be divisible by 19 so x would be divisible by 19 but an x squared would be divisible by 19 squared and because this is divisible by 19 squared then so, would, so then this would also have to be divisible by that. And that's a horrible estimate. We cannot really check that in a reasonable amount of time. We can't check that as humans. So we have to look for some other things. And in these types of problems, you usually look for some sort of modular arithmetic sort of thing. Like, is there something by some module that just finishes our problem really like a contradiction that we will never get a square. Like what is 304? It's congruence to seven modulo nine, or that's actually one modulo three. Seven modulo nine, do we have squares which are congruence to seven modulo nine? I'm thinking, what is it? What is a modulo nine? We have one goes to a one, a 2 goes to a 4, a 3 goes to a 0, a 4 goes to 16, 16, ah, it goes to a 7. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, it goes to a 7. So that won't work. We're looking for a good module. Let's see, what else do we have? If we try a 5, this is minus 1, that's okay. If we try 8, well, this is divisible by 8, this will be, this will be divisible by 16. That is a okay as well. So we can't go with powers of two. What are we ever going to do? 
what if we tried, what, can, what else can we try here? Like this is the type of problem where you put a bunch of ideas and just like try to see what is it that will stick. So let's see, what if we put, what if we take modulo seven? So modulo seven, this is going to be 304. So what is saying that's close is 280. This was will by seven. If I add 21, that gives me 301. So this here is free modulo seven is x squared and ever free modulo seven. So if we look at zero plus and minus one plus and minus two plus and minus three, this is what x will be congruent to modulo seven. And then x squared is zero, one, four, and nine gives us a two modulo seven. Okay, and now this finishes up sort of our, this gives us a bond for y. And this is really what you're doing. You're looking for a suitable candidate for a module that will make this now work. Why you focus on sort of having X break your thing instead of having Y break your thing. And the reason why is because, well, the reason why you don't focus on the Y is because you don't really have a lot of control for Y. You have multiplication in Y. And with multiplication, you can figure out what the factors are. With X squared, the best thing you can do is figure out, okay, when are the, when are the roots going to actually come and happen? And when, I, when am I going to get the roots that I want? And you're looking at, okay, we try, I thought of five, three, eight, 16. Another common tactic is if P divides this and P divides this, P divides this, so P squared divides this, then two, then Y is less than, that is strictly less than two P, if p squared doesn't divide this, right? It's looking at different powers which divide every one of these numbers because mind you, this is a constant. And then we looked at, okay, so we had modulo seven, x is either zero, zero, one, four, or two. And if y was greater than or equal to seven, we would have that y factorial plus 304 would be congruent to zero plus three, would be congruent to three modulo seven, which is not what X squared is going to be congruent to. So Y greater than or equal to seven doesn't work. Now, what about Y equal to six and five? We need to check those. Like these will not work out because they're not equal to 324 is the only option here. So what do we have left? We have 120 to add to this, which will give us, let's see, 21 squared is equal to 4, 4, 1. 22 squared is equal to something that's going, this is going to be 424. Ah, it's between these two squares, so it's not a square. And the only question is, does six factorial work out? And now what I would like to do first is, you know, check. Okay, I wanted a little bit of a cowardly cop house, which is saying, wait, let me use Wilson's theorem. But that doesn't work out here. Wilson's theorem just says that if you have a prime number P, then P minus one factorial plus one is divisible by P. It's just a theorem. And now we have to check 720, which is equal to six factorial. And what do we get here? Six, actually 720. I'm saying one thing, writing another thing down. Oh, this plus 304 is equal to 1024. Oh, wow, cool. And this is what? This is equals 32 squared. I finished computer science at university so, as my bachelor's, so I just see this as two to the power of 10 immediately. And so there is a solution. Yeah, huh. interesting. So x equals to 32, y equals to six is a solution. And as we've checked for y greater than or equal to seven, there cannot be any solution due to divisibility, well, due to not divisibility by looking at the remainders when x squared is divided by seven. 
And this finishes up our problem, right? We've checked everything up till then, nothing works. And this finishes up the problem. It's a cool little funky little thing, this problem. I'm actually kind of a little, little bit of a fan, but I wanted to show you that what you're doing here is like you're testing everything out. I didn't know the solution to this. When I saw it, I was like, okay, let me do three. Doesn't work. Four, eight, 16, 19. No, doesn't like works, but doesn't work for me. I'm not writing everything up till 38 factorial. That's huge. And that's how you just like boom, 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 boom. Try things out and then boom, some actually boom, this thing fails. This finishes up our problem, and as always, thanks for problem solving.